aboard the Bar Stewards Inquiry in association with SystemBet.co.uk. I'm Catherine Fry. I'm joined as ever by Lee Keys from SystemBet and John Leng from John Joe's Blogspot, a very amusing page on Facebook. Do give it a look and a like. So we're here to look at the second day of the showcase meeting at Cheltenham, the traditional curtain raiser to the great season that Cheltenham has in store. Sadly, it looks as though not many of us are going to make it on course this year, but we can but watch. And we're going to have a little look at uh, a bit of the flat action as well after we take in the Cheltenham card in its entirety. Before that, we've just got a, a few questions. So thanks again to everybody that's that's been in touch. Uh, start with the questions on Twitter first. There's a question from Invicta Capital. It says, what is your view on anti-post betting? Is it a worthwhile endeavour or has that ship sailed? Uh, Lee, I'll throw to you first. Um, I think I think I think as a recreational punter, um, anti-post betting's got a, a role to play. Um, certainly, you get some good value. Bookmakers offer good value. Uh, speaking personally, obviously, it's very difficult to get on to any kind of magnitude. So, from my perspective, um, it's not the same as it used to be. Where, like before internet, you could basically go on course or you could go into a shop in town request a price they would they would generally lay you lay you a very decent bet on something anti-post however nowadays because it's all bot orientated online uh, with, with the bookmakers very very difficult for any kind of stake in magnitude to be even bothered uh, looking at anti-post these days but certainly you know for, for a casual uh, recreational bet or yes look anti-post and, and and obviously try and get the value yeah Okay, John, was it something that you do? It, it's something that I do. Well, I haven't had much success with it the last 10 years, really. Um, the thing is, I still kind of fancy me to pull one of these off at some point. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> even, even though I probably would. Um, I often say, like, what I think mm, guineas are about this time of year and think, well, I'll have a little go, you know. And I mean, I don't mean anything ridiculous, maybe 50 or 100 each weight, 25, 33. Um, but it's something to keep you interested during the winter. Yeah, and yeah. As you're looking at the entries in the spring, you know. Um, but, you know, if you did away with it, it wouldn't be the end of the world, really. No. I mean, I would say that probably for, um, I'd say for the festival, I probably do have a look at the anti-post market and for something that I think is probably a little bit on the generous side, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely have a bet. Um, tend to the sort of non-runner no bet comes out because you're guaranteed of a, of a few more points, but then of course you have got the old, uh, oh no, where are they going to run? But yeah, you're right. It's not something I do a lot of, but it still does have a place in me certainly certainly for the big meetings um so thanks for that um in victor um a question from nick the nipper thoughts on ryan moore out of the door at coolmore colin Keane apparently one to six to replace him as stable jockey i think that's home and hose doesn't it i i, I think that anyway I don't know about you fellas yeah um i mean i, I think colin Keane's a fine jockey um but if i'm going to be a little bit critical um, I do think Colin likes the old waiting ride and come flying down the outside in the last sort of uh, 200 yards. He's a little bit one-dimensional like that for me. You don't see many times where Colin nicks one from the front or, you know, it, it's it's mainly we'll take a lead. We'll, we'll, and, and sometimes I do think you've got to think out the box a bit and I, I'm not sure Colin has that, like, oh, he... he I, I I don't want to tag him as like a Jamie Spencer kind 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 of jockey, but but at the same time he does like that with withering run inside the final furlong. So yeah, but I agree. I think I think Colin's a good jockey anyway. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, John, agree? Um, yeah, I mean he looks the obvious choice. Um, what they were saying there, I, I don't think <laughs> it sounds a bit ridiculous when they won the Derby we won this year, but I don't think the lads are. Overly enthusiastic about front runners anyway. No, no. You don't mind wasting a couple on the front end. Mm. Um, 
as a, as a rule, you know, I mean, I don't remember Mer taking in our day and really winning many from the front now. No. So, yeah, you no, know, fair point. Uh, I, think, I think King's a, a fair shout, but Ryan definitely looks as though he's on his way out, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So um, we'll move on to the questions on Facebook. Uh, one from Tim Devine. Who would your jockey and trainer of this truncated flat season be? And for me, could I suggest a promising conditional to follow for the jump season? Yep, I can do that. I'll ask the guys first. Who would your jockey and trainer of this very strange flat season that's just ending be? Um, I would go for um, actually after you, Watson, because. He still hasn't got the big tackle that that the that some of the trainers have. You know the 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 real big big breeding tackle. And after he's proven that he can get a two year old red A. And Im- imagine if you buy a two year old at the breeze up, you send it to Arche, and you potentially it, it wins by five on its debut. Potentially, then you've got King Kong ringing up. You know three hundred thousand four. You know that that's the kind of dream you can sell to to someone that isn't. Um, Godolphin and Colmore, mm-hmm. and 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 so I would recommend Archie and, and Glenn Shield proves like his his, his training skills, um, and uh, Holly Doyle would be my jockey because I think um, I think she's tremendous. Um, she's moved the goalposts on massively, and I'm a massive fan of Holly Doyle. So that that would be my two. Fantastic, John. For you, um, well, on the tra- training front, I think Tim Easterby's had a marvelous season. Mm-hmm. Um, just about everything in his yard has improved its rating from the start of the season. Um, I was going to say Holly Doyle um, as the jockey. Um, I suppose I'd better include Tom Markham, really, than the other half of the power couple in racing. You know? yeah. I think yeah. He's had a more than reasonable season. I mean, I, I would have probably said O'Shane, but you know, I mean, he's got the uh, the, the powder conviction hanging over him now, hasn't he? And everything. it's not. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, so that does not look good. You know, I mean, you can't make your jockey of the year uh, somebody with that sort of thing hanging over them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, that, as I said, definitely Tim Easterby for me amongst the trainers. Uh, I think his training's been an absolute joy this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would. Um, I would agree. Certainly, um, you know, I wouldn't watch a lot of what I call everyday flat racing, but when I do, I certainly notice that he was he's banging in winners, you know, left, right, and centre on the ordinary days and on the big days, which which hadn't happened for a while. So, yeah, I agree with you there, John. Um, Tim, for me, the promising conditionals. There's quite a few actually. Two we actually saw in action today, and, and they won at Champ today. I think Kevin Brogan's now based with John Joe O'Neill. He claims seven. He's very good, as we saw to effect in the last race at Champ today. Killian Leonard, um, he's he's excellent. Won the big hurdle at, at Champ today. A couple over in Ireland, um, Owen Walsh, um, he claims seven, I believe. Gavin Bruder and um, Oakley Brown, of course, who uh, rides a lot for Joseph O'Brien. They're certainly the ones that I would have to the four for me at the moment. Um, I think we've got one more question. Um, we'll just load it here. Jeez, we've got two more questions. Okay. Um, from Will Ho, ride of the year and the worst ride of the year and a three-year-old for next year. John, I'll go to you first. <laughs> <laughs> well, ride of the year, I'm, I'm going to go with me all met thick Dave. Um, <laughs> because... Um, there was one one occasion where he was particularly not thick, okay. and uh, that was when he got Count Dorsey taken off, and this horse was nearly running away. It was going so well, which is a bit funny if he gets to the front so quick. And and three and a half down, thick Dave just pulled it in behind one, took a bit of a tug, and he turned that to absolute perfection. It, I felt emotional about the ride. It was so good. And uh, for me, that was the ride of the season there and then. Okay. The worst ride, I think, was everybody else in the Judmont. Yeah. (laughs) Um, 
it'll just transpire to make it a lap of honour for Gaeth. Um, the same what the problem was in the eclipse, and then they decided they'd like to put it on loop and play it against Sam. Yeah. You know, um, absolutely ridiculous that nobody took a, any any sort of interest in challenging the arse early. Um, I mean, I couldn't believe that Aiden didn't fail a couple of spoilers there anyway. Mm-hmm. But the jockeys there were absolute idiots, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, and the three-year-old... No point looking this one up because he hasn't done anything yet. It's called Irreproachable. And uh, it'll probably have a couple of floats ups and then ponce up at Wolverhampton one Saturday night in April. Okay. Well, look out for that, John. Thanks for that. Um, okay, um, Lee, I'll, I'll go to you. Ride of the year, worst ride of the year in a three year old. Um, well, I, I, I'm too much of a pocket talker, really. I, I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest that that literally any ride of the year is anything that wins me thousands. Worst ride of the year is anything that loses me thousands, and just you know, and just a bliss and makes my mood terrible for the day. So, yep. so yeah, so that as simple as that, really. Because I think the the problem is with jockeys is that you know it's a split second decision most of the time for most things. So. It, you know, it's, it's it's hard really to sort of like single out things. I always think on things like this. Um, as for a three-year-old for next year, um, the one that won the nursery at Leopardstown last weekend called Benno. Um, oh yeah, named, yeah. After, named after the famous uh, cricket commentator. Um, I I think this horse has just got oodles and oodles in hand, and that's the thing I like. Rather than point your way in the in the way of a Guineas winner or a, or a classic winner, I'd rather give something that I think is going to defy the handicap and progress maybe to pattern level further down the line. Something for you to follow. So Benno for me okay. is is a, is a is a physic physically is a great horse as well. So next year he'll be even better. So Benno for next Benno. year. Okay. Yeah. Um, right, last question um, from Paul Sarkeld. Is having seven and eight British Irish horse racing meetings a day justifiable <clears throat> when financial restraints are in place? Um, well, first of all, I can tell you about Paul. He's very greedy. Paul, <laughs> is, Paul is a bookmaker in York, and I can tell you now, Paul is a very, very greedy man. So whatever, whatever Paul says or wants, he, he, he's in it for himself. He's, he's greedy. We don't want Paul. No, it's no good. No good. So, but yes, in answer to his question, yes, it's obviously uh, self-defeating. It's a very short-termist approach in terms of let's bring in revenue now and but basically what's down the line we no i don't i don't think no one knows but mm-hmm. the, the horse population can't fill these fixtures going forwards because yes. as we know the turf horses will be roughed off um etc cetera, etc cetera. The, the owners aren't even putting some horses into training because of the financial constraints so uh, funny times ahead but may, maybe the bha saw this and thought well let's get a lot of races in and let's get the the, the, the cash tills to, uh, tills churning, and then let's see where we're at. But there's no. Right it's not or wrong sustainable at the, at the model. If if the world carries on as it is at the moment, it's not. It's sustainable not model. sustainable now. Yeah. No. Okay, John, would you go along with that? Um, pretty much. I'm going to have a little bit of a rant here. Go on, go on. Um, uh, Paul's kind of teed it up for me. Thank you, Paul. I don't think you're greedy at all. <laughs> um, ever since Savile, when he was at the BHA, decided that bookmakers were doing all right, so it was best to let them dictate what to do. Racing's been a dog being wagged by its own tail, basically. <laughs> We've never had an economic model that lends itself to seven or eight meetings a day. Never. High summer or high whatever. It's never actually been the type of model that you would have wanted. But this sense of entitlement prevails in the game. No one in racing really has any idea of what a proper downturn looks like. The worst that they've had was when Shaky and Colmar got their heads together in the late 80s and brought Caneland prices under control. And that's all they did as well. It wasn't a proper slump. 
the rock races under control. Even then, there were stallion masters in the good old US of A who thought it was perfectly reasonable to ask 100,000 to jump from their stallions. These are men who overbred to certain stallions without giving any thought to the long-term benefit of the sport or the breed. They just used extra coverings as their own personal overdraft. When they started the Breeders' Cup, the rules for entry were that stallions that weren't registered couldn't be represented at the Breeders' Cup. And the fee for registration was the cost of covering every a covering every stallion covered at least one extra mare that year, funnily enough. Racing assumes breeders have to make a hundred thousand plus a year. No one has the temerity to make these people wake up. None of them have had proper jobs. Think on a lot of breeders are from moneyed families who go into bloodstock because they're the kids that are too thick for a job in the city. <laughs> You know? <laughs> Someone tell me what's wrong with a breeder banking 17 grand one year after expenses. Racing's idea of a decent living is based on some kind of fantasy figure that the top 1% have in their heads. If they all looked at the real world, even journeymen jockeys would belt up about what they're making. Mm-hmm. Racing is just the sense of entitlement in the sport is beyond all reason. Yeah, I do agree. That was quality, a quality rant there, John. Absolute yeah, I, I, yeah, that yeah. is. Yeah, that spot on. Stand innovation for that one, John. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And so that leads us quite nicely into uh, the first uh, first look at the first race on day two of the showcase at Cheltenham. Yeah, we just sound like we hate racing, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we hate life. I was just gonna, <laughs> I was just going to tee that up by saying uh, Cheltenham, where entitlement runs rife. Yeah. Uh, trust me, I, I, I'm from the town. I love the place, but Jesus, it's, uh, it's a funny old world around here, I'll tell you that. Um, so, Lee, I do believe that you have studied the Cheltenham card. Yes. Uh, great to see. Great to see we like that. Um, I'll let you go first on this, um, on this opener. Okay, yep. Yeah, the... Uh, it- on the old course, um, yep. which I always find fascinating because I, and I think punters that maybe aren't aware of Cheltenham, it has two courses, the old and new course. And the new course, especially over the two miles, is a lot sharper yep. than the old course. Um, as that's the, the old course is, is on the outer loop, which is yep. basically, a, you know, it's quite a, a testing uphill, uphill running. And that's that's kind of like, like perplexing me with all mankind because... Although he, he won, you know, he's, he's won over this course and distance. He was yep. third um, in in the in the Triumph Hurdle. Um, now, that for me though, it's a disadvantage. This course for him is a disadvantage because he does he does too much. He's very giving on the on the bridle, yep. and and I would prefer for this horse to be campaigned probably away from the old course because this horse surely. For example, when when he ran at Chepster, which is absolutely a front runner's paradise, yeah, um, you know, and and everyone waxed lyrical about his performance um, in the um, the Grade One uh, Coral Finale. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know that that plays to his strengths. This course does not play to his strengths, ir- irrespective of how he's going to run tomorrow. Um, even though he's won round here, yes, he's beat the second favourite. Botox has. Uh, by two and a half lengths when they when when, when they last when they last met, um, I just feel that he, he's one that really I, I couldn't I couldn't have really because because of the way he races and this particular track. And as we saw today, um, the ground isn't too bad, but at the same time, I wouldn't want to be reefing and pulling, um, mm-hmm. you know, on that sort of stickyish ground. So I'd, I'd, I'd be willing to take on Dan Skelton's runner, I think, in the first. Yeah, um, I'm with you there, Lee. And actually, uh, if we could just go back to the triumph hurdle, um, I know that he he absolutely pulled like a train, but he had done that previously at Cheltenham and, and again, in all of his races. But I noticed that in the triumph hurdle, he was absolutely out on his feet, where normally he will, he will run through the line 
and he'll actually, yeah. it's very, very, very hard to pull up at the end. Uh, he was, I mean, he stopped to a walk pretty much. And I thought, just, you know, all right, you could see, you could argue that he's had, he's had a long season pulling the way he does. And I just wondered, was it the sort of, obviously everything's so much louder at the festival, more horses. I wondered, had that got to him a little bit? He was very keen during the race, but that wasn't unusual. But at the prices, I'd not really, I'd rather watch him again to, to find out. Um, yeah. two, in, two in here, that, that would interest me. Obviously, you've got the sort of the top three in the market. You know, the, the smart ones head the market, no surprise. There's two in here that I, I really do quite like. I don't know if tomorrow is the day. I'll be watching, watching the markets in the morning to see if I will have a bet or not. But I really like uh, Nordano. I think he's he's a, he's a lovely little tank of a horse. He's got this huge white face, very very likable. He's had a little run out on the flat 19 days ago, and he he just he just doesn't give up. And he's been placed at Cheltenham before. We are due to get an almighty amount of rain before racing tomorrow, and that would certainly help his cause. Um, another, I like the Irish raider, uh, John McConnor's Anna Bonina. Uh, she's been in fantastic form in Ireland, and the stable are in fantastic form as well. She noticed that she's just getting back a little bit now. Um, at the prices at the moment, I'd probably play Nordano. Um, but yeah, I, I, All Mankind is a, is a watch for me tomorrow. John, have you taken an interest in this opener? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, all Mankind, I think this is going to be very, very testing for the horse. Um, I was looking at the stick rating, six point something, um, which mm. I thought was not anything other than the good that he's advertising at, you know? I mean, it's not good up there. <laughs> no, I, I don't want to start a rook with Mr. Clare's because I, I know it like you're know, getting invited up to the big house for all the little soirees and everything. And, <laughs> and, and, Must have me confused with someone else, John. I, 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 so, I don't think I'm that popular. Um, so the last thing I want to do is cause any trouble there. Um, I did think Stratagem is a two and a half miler in waiting and I think might be staying on well at the end, but can't really see me having a bet there, to be honest. Okay. All right. Um, where, oh, yes, here we are. Okay. The, this, now, this race is interesting. Uh, that's the matchbook novices chase. Um, at the, the conditions of the race doesn't really have cool Cody in its favour. But I think he's showing signs that he's really coming back to himself. He's won at Cheltenham before. So I'm actually, even the conditions of the race don't suit him, out of sort of sheer madness, I'm actually going to back Cool Cody, the outsider of four. Uh, Lee, did you have anything on this race? Um, yes, I was, um, I think it's quite an interesting race because uh, going through the runners, um, I, I respect what you said about Cool Cody. Uh, I did take a look at it. Um, however, um, I do feel that the Philip Hobbs trained uh, pylon. Um, oh, yeah. Um, nearly won the uh, Martin Pipe. He yeah. was second in the Martin Pipe, and he's very athletic, real, real, real athletic. So um, I, I just I, I liked him over hurdles. The campaign quite quietly, as if to say, yeah, you know, before the Martin Pipe, it was up at Catterick and the, the gaff, you know, and as if to say, we're just going to give you some experience. Um, and I, I really, I just like the really, really like this horse. Um, the, the Southfield Stone for me. Um, He's a bit jaded, um, you know. Basically, finds one too good. Not that Fuise was 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 um, suited by the real strong pace at Perth. Yes. Uh, just 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 swung off nicely. Had the complete run of the race. Um, so again, uh, I, I'm not really wanting to support that horse with the uh, with the penalty. Um, so I thought Pylon. As long as he came with his A1 jumping game, would would be good. But I've seen that they've smashed him in. Again, this is quite boring for me as a as, as a punter, as you know, of most punters. Nine to four to thirteen to eight already in some yeah. places. It's quite boring. But but pile on was for me. Okay, awesome, John. Anything in this chase? Just thought Southfield Stone, a richly experienced chaser after a wind up. Um, 
would probably be fairly dangerous. I'd be really windy about backing anything that hasn't had much experience mm -hmm. jump, jumping around this place because I think it's a bit trappy. Mm -hmm. But there you go. Fair point, John. Yep. Okay. Is it a bet, John? No. no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this, this 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 next race is one of my favourite races actually of the of the early season. So the the Potemps qualifier, um, two two in here. Spot the giga. <laughs> <laughs> two, two in here particularly like and and always always watch the ones uh, coming home fifth and sixth as as we know. Um, it was quite interesting is that John McConnell said that he saw um, Street Doyen as a Potemps final horse. Now he's actually got Streets of Doyen in the uh, in the novices hurdle later on in the card. So I'm wondering is he is he going to run in that to have a little bit look at the course and then is he going to go for the the Irish qualifier in Leopardstown where it's good manners to finish six. Just wonder is 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 that is that the plan? Yeah, I don't know because I, I was quite surprised that he didn't he didn't come in here. Um also really like in this um, champagne court. Um, just didn't really sort of started off well over fences and sort of lost the edge a bit. He's run very well here in the past. We placed at a festival. He's had his wind done. I saw some rumbling in the week from some organisations saying that they don't think he'll stay three miles. I don't think that's the case. Um, his, the dam is related to a Royal Athlete, so I don't think there's any problems there. It's from uh, Jeremy Scott, a man who knows the time of day, and I, I, I really do like Champagne Court immensely, so I was delighted to actually see him stepping up and trip a little bit. Um, love old, to be fair, he was right there in the mix-up for the stayers hurdle. Uh, Jack Tudor takes the five off him, which is going to be very useful as as top weight, and he'll give his running. He he will be there in the shake up. Um, and if you, you know, if you translated the stayers form to this, then then you'd have him as the winner. But at the prices at the moment is is Champagne Court for me at uh, twelve to one, around twelve to one at the moment. Um, Lee, any thoughts on this one? Yeah, good shout uh, with that. Um, I just had a little inkling for Flink. Um, okay. uh, Basically, ran a real, real good third in a in the, in the uh, re, uh, Chepster meeting uh, the the silver trophy. Um, again, sort of not finding the the good ground. I don't think to his liking, and uh, you know it was too quick that day. In fact, some people said it was even like on the good to firm side. Yes. Um, and and the horse stayed on really nicely in the closing stages. And if you watch his victory, if anyone's sort of like playing tomorrow, what watch watch when he beat the con man at Haydock last December and you know the the way he sort of like stayed on really dourly and then and then got to the front and then pulled himself up and okay. I like I like things like that in a horse because it basically tells you that the horse is saying look I've done enough you know I, I could do more but I'm not going to do more and 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 I, and, I, and I think off, still off a mark of 130 I think stepping up in trip I think could be his could you know like a nice stalking ride waiting right here from from uh, from Decky Johnson um, I think, um, yeah, could see uh, see each way support rewarded. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Lee. Uh, John, like anything here? I've actually had a bet in this. Oh, yes. Come um, on. Um, and I've moved the market somewhat. Um, I took the 33 to 1 with Paddy Power, this Sperida of Nigel Hawks. Okay. We only need to go back six runs, and this was running 150 over fences. Um, running off 129 here. Okay. Um, I don't think it's had a lot go right for it since. It's had a couple of questionable rides, shall we say. Um, I like the braiding very much for the likely conditions tomorrow. And uh, I think there was quite a bit of value in this 33 to 1, hence the bet. Okay, I like it, John. So. That's one of me to do best tomorrow over the sticks. Shout, John. Like it. Okay, awesome. Um, thanks for that. Right, let's move on to this um, the Matchbook Betting Exchange Handicap Chase. Oh, you know what? If there is a crowd in tomorrow and Frodon hits the front, can you imagine it? what it would sound like? It would just be amazing. 
mantle. Yeah. Frodon gives weight all around. Um, masses of weight all around. Hard job, but I think him and uh, Miss Frost are definitely up to the task. Um, was for whatever reason thought he was a little bit out of sorts in the Ryanair. He didn't have the sort of flyer of the season that he'd had going into the previous year when he won it. I don't. I think even with giving all that weight, I don't think that there's anything in this field, respectable as they are, that is of his class. Cogri loves the place and will be following home. Um, but it's a, it's, it's a no bet for me. I'll, I'll just be willing to throw it on up the hill. Uh, Lee? Yeah, I pretty much concur there, Catherine. Um, like, throw it on would, would be a very popular winner. Um, only thing I can mention in this really is Man of the Mountain. I, um, I, I was told off a, off a very good uh, contact of mine that they expected this to progress into a Saturday horse okay. uh, this, this year. Um, and obviously, and you could tell he was the winner a long way out at Bangor. I know, I know he didn't win by miles, but you could, you could literally tell he, 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 he'd won a long way out. So I would think none of them, but this is a big step up for him. So I, I've, I've no real betting ammunition, but yeah, okay. that would be my mention. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, John, is your other bet in this race? It is. Oh, go on. <laughs> Vivas down the bottom. Okay. Uh, the kids' claim gets the horse just about until its proper mark. Um, I thought last time out was a step in the right direction. It's German bred. Um, attritional conditions tomorrow will suit. And 33 to 1 was quite spotting, I thought. Okay. So. Okay. That's me, other one. Beautiful, John. We'll, we'll turn you into a jumping enthusiast yet. You won't. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. <laughs> uh, okay, so the uh, the racing welfare novices hurdle, the four twenty five. This is this is actually a no bet race for me. Uh, I just want to see how Streets of Doyen gets on around Cheltenham. Um, obviously, Ben Pauling's with the Bacon Lugnatic. Um, his horses are in way better form than last season. They've solved the problems. Um, it's, I think this is a bit of a. You can see this going one or two ways, really. Um, it could turn into be a sort of one of those very sort of sneaky, sneaky tactical Cheltenham affairs. And I don't really know where to go in this race. I don't. Have you got a firm bet for this one, Lee? Um, yeah, actually, this okay. is. This is... I mean, I love Streets of Diane. There's a reason being. Um, he's a very kind horse to me in that, you, in fact, for in running punters on Betfair, you can watch this horse in running, and it's quite hilarious. Because all you got to do is, don't, don't, don't take the odds beforehand, ignore that, right? And just wait until sort of three or four out, wait till he's pushed along, you know, put, put, put five or six to one in the system and watch the idiots match you. And then, and then all of a sudden, then they start to panic when he's coming into evens, coming into the last. It literally is that simple with the horse. The horse, he's 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 a character. He's incredible. He's incredibly lazy, and yeah. and and you can see. In fact, when he won last time out, um, the horse that fell at the last had a chance, but this guy was just upside and just you know dossing away. I love that. I, lo I love that trait in a horse that, as if to say, you know, I can get this job done. Just you know. Don't shove me too hard. I'll get there in the end. And it's great for him running. It's great. Like I said, if anyone plays on Betfair or does that, streets are dying. That's the angle, you know, to wait for the horse to come off the bridle. And I promise you, you'll get you'll get bigger. And and then, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the bet. That's the play. Every time with the horse, last three runs, he's he's gone. He's gone. He's gone bigger than SP. And you know, that's 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 the form. Yeah. Okay, that's the that's the angle there, like that. Okay, yeah. um, John, anything for you in this race? I, I had a brave look at this, and I was <laughs> I, I was a bit too mercury to be honest. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's a, it, that's a tough one, John. I have to say, um, right, the bumper. Um, I have a I have a bet in this. Um, let's have a we'll have a little look down the card. At, oh my god, I can't even get the card up now. 
bear with me. Sorry, some technical difficulties. No, I'm being an absolute moron. Sorry, I've missed out the race. I've missed out the amateur jockeys handicap chase. Yeah, which I've, got is... a nap. I've got a nap here. Have you? <laughs> yes. Okay, I wonder if it's the same as mine. Okay, Lee, go on then. Uh, Plantagenet. That's mine as well. Yay, we've done it. That's, the better, that's, that's my bet of the day tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's my bet of the day. So, okay. So, so cue seven to two when we shut this podcast down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, second last year. Gina yes. Andrews, brilliant around Cheltenham. Um, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yes. And, and they're taking Kenny Sanson off. Yes. You know, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, dreadful jockey. I mean, I mean, I mean he, he, he's no good at all. I mean, poor Seamus Mullins for years, suffering. But I mean, I mean, Gina last yeah. year in the uh, in the in this race as a ran, ran a blinder, only ran into petite power uh, yeah. for 115 drive. petite power, 115, yeah. which you know that was that was sort of pretty well in because it, I mean, if you look at petite powers like lifetime sort of record uh 115 was sort of the minimum rating that petite power sort of sort of won off i mean 125 sort of 100 you know that kind of so i mean plant plantagenet ran into one that day there's not a lot of pace on here which i like and i, I like i like i like the fact that this one will go from the front you know not mess about or or, or go handy anyway and and i think we've got we've got a big each way bets and nothing there yeah, 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 absolutely. I would agree wholeheartedly with that. Um, yeah. John, anything in the in the amateur race? Yes, uh, me okay. trying to use uh, Yoto when you independently come up with the same horse <laughs> would be the equivalent of somebody with no arms trying to knit fog. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's in cracking form tonight, are you, John? Yeah. If, yeah. Okay, so and now to the bumper. I will get this right now. So the five thirty-five, the Royal Gloucester Hazards Standard Open National Hunt Flat Race. Always a good bumper. This and do I have one in this? I do indeed. Right down the bottom of the card, Shantou's Melody, the only ride of the day for John Joe O'Neill Jr. First foal of the mighty Glen's Melody. Of course, benefited when Annie Power fell at the last in the mares in two thousand and fifteen narrowly touched off on his last run tomorrow that and plantagenet 11 to 1 at the moment that and plantagenet nice end to the Cheltenham card tomorrow did you yeah. have anything lee no not in the bumper now John, the bumper more up your street isn't it uh, absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> You talk about that. There's no obstacles in the way. No, 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 no. You, you sorted that out for me there, Catherine. That'll do me. Yeah. Okay. Catherine's a nap there, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. Awesome. We'll, we'll go with that. Um, right. I'm going to let John. He's absolutely been a complete trooper through that Chapman card. Um, I'm going to hand over to John, and, and, I will, and Lee will probably chip in as well. John, mm -hmm. talk about Doncaster to your heart's content. Okay, do. Well, the first race, um, one that you, you, you might find a little bit interesting at the price is Dash of Space. They left the tongue tie off last time when it was favourite. Now, I don't know whether that's the fact that Mr. Ellsworth was probably 70 odd and maybe forgot to declare it and then thought, oh, we can still run. Um, <laughs> The last six times it's appeared on a race course, it's run against track biases. Um, and basically, I'm hoping that Mr. Ellsworth carers don't let him make the trip to Doncaster tomorrow. <laughs> and they let Tom make his own mind up about what he does tactics wise. Because I think if the dirt will, I think of 93 is very, very dangerous in this company. Six runs ago, he was off 103. Okay. Uh, the tongue tie is back on tomorrow. So when it has everybody scratching their head and saying, how the hell is that one? I backed it last time, blah, blah, blah. There's the explanation and the excuse. Okay. Um, we've got a 13 to 8 favourite there from a yard where they really should be putting the shutters up and having an inquest. Um, so, 14 to 1 is just ridiculously good value, I think. Uh, okay, yeah, we like that, John. 
You're um, you're really. I, I'm loving these big prices tonight. They're fantastic. Yeah. Looking at Dasha's price now. Awesome. Okay, thanks for that, John. Lee, anything in the first at Donny for you? No, I'm just admiring John's commentary. It's amazing. <laughs> I know. If only John wrote all the spotlights. Imagine how funny that would be. They wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> I know, but it would like imagine I'd buy the paper every day if you wrote the spotlights, John. <laughs> She's a point, John. She's a point. That would be you and about four close family members, Catherine. You know, it would not keep the racing post going, I'm afraid. Um, the futurity tomorrow. Um, the Vertum futurity, is it? Yep, it is, yeah. What the hell is Vertum, by the way? I've never heard of them. I haven't got a clue. Um, um, anyway, to me, this race reminds me of Brian the dog from Family Guy. <laughs> Oh, okay. um, I mean, Harry Potter's main derby horse probably have not even run yet. Um, John Magnier would never, ever in a million years sanction calling their best one Wembley anyway. Lansdowne Road, perhaps, but uh -huh. certainly. Um, one rule is probably the one to give that a race. Um, and one thing I did notice, it should be back to the sponge slippers for Dandy's son, really, running one rated 75, eh? <laughs> um, what on earth he's thinking of, I mean, he can't want to own us, you know. Uh, I think Wembley will probably win this, and I think it'll be an absolute nothing race. I don't think it'll matter in the great scheme of things next year what won this. Okay. Because I, I can't have Wembley as a classic prospect and uh, yeah I, I guess like the Magdias home of English football they don't really go together do they <laughs> absolutely not no um, okay. it, it'd be marty fan if they won the derby with that I did, I, I did like one in here at a price by the way go on Lee yeah um, I, I did think like um, Jim Bolgers you like Jim Bolger John don't you I mean, he's nothing but polite about Mr. Bolger. Yeah, I, I, and, I, and I thought this would bring a smile to Jim's face, you know, because. Really? But, well, maybe not, but. <laughs> you say it an orphanage, mate, you know. <laughs> but so anyway, yeah, Jim Bolger's Max Swiney. Um, now, interest in this because it beat Wembley. If you're in 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 the maiden back in July now, and since then it beat Cadillac in a group two. Cadillac was four lengths behind St Mark's Basilica in the Jewers, so not beaten far. Then it disappointed in the behind Thunder Moon last time out. But but then you consider that Max Swiney was drawn right on the outside and basically had a terrible trip. I felt so. How is this sort of like fourteen? Well, it's been twenty to one. I mean, I mean, but again, the the, the steaming in. They, they always take my odds. Um, that, you know, Julian Wilson's self entitlement there, John. Did you hear it? They, they're taking my odds. <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, you yeah. Be blocked, wouldn't you? <laughs> me, I, me, I moved blocked. You are taking my yes, yes. You are not entitled to do this. Um. So anyway, so yeah. But anyway, that that was the one at a price. I felt. For, for, to cheer Jim up, so yeah, that's Max Quiney. Yeah, I wonder if he's ever smiled. No one's seen it. Uh, it's one of those like urban myths, isn't it? Yeah. Um, okay, I, I'm sure he smiled a great deal when that thing he wasn't running in the derby actually won the derby and <laughs> it, it was utterly yeah. sickened for weeks. Yeah, he had a dry smile. Um, I'm sure that put an inward smile on his face. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, anything, else, anything else for you at Don John? Uh, in the three thirty at Doncaster, there's my bet of the day. Awesome. And uh, sorry, after I've been going for some fairly good prices, this thing at the minute, the best price we can obtain is five to two, but I think this will walk it. Jumby, Dave Johnson Outens. Okay. Um. I was really impressed with this first time up. I thought it was 
the group horse in the making. And then it's yeah. run twice at Newbury since in scratchy little failed conditions races. And it's been doing too much on the bridle both times. Um, a lot too much, in fact. Um, this promises to be more evenly run um, and dropping back from a mile to seven. I think this has about 10 to 12 pound in hand of this mark. I, I think it's a hundred plus hours, definitely. Probably maybe it's even about 105 hours. Okay. And uh, I, I don't think top weight will stop it in this kind of company. I think it's a really, really good bet this one. Okay, thanks, John. Um, Lee, do you have anything at Doncaster? No, I was just very interested in what John said there. I, I agree, I did like the last run as well, so yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. awesome. Um, anything else anywhere <laughs> anywhere else across Britain and Ireland tomorrow for either of you? I've got one more at Doncaster. Um, okay. In the 440, Ace Lord has spent most of the season on ground that's too quick for him. Right, yeah. Come down, mate. Yeah, he's come down nicely in the weight. Given the correct sort of ride, he, he should pretty much love this. You know, um, I think that's a fairly solid each way player. And the other one I liked was in the far ten at Newbury. Right. Yeah, I think it was the St. Simon Stakes. Now it's been taken over by some form of advertising. I can't even remember who's sponsoring it now. Oh, the um, Prava Stakes. Oh, yeah, whatever. Um, Raymond Tusk um, should be a winner for the delightful Midland Park gang. Uh, it's just a strong old mutt, this. Um, handle the conditions. A lot of three-year-olds and that fall apart in this race, um, especially when it's naughty weather like we're having tomorrow. Yeah. So I think Raymond Tusk will say this lot off. Is it still called the Racecourse Newbury, or did they drop that? <laughs> I'm not sure. He, did he retire, Osgood? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you see, it, it all ended in disappointment with him, really, didn't it? You know what I mean? He, um, you go back 10 years or so, he had an impressive tash. <laughs> <laughs> The trilby was at Gaunty Angle, um, and the going forecasts were just about spot on. And then I, I don't know whether they went to a party at Kirkland Tell right so I won't. <laughs> you already seemed to turn into a swamp overnight, and he, he, he certainly got Kirkland Aitis where he started lying about the conditions of his ground. It was terrible. Um, Kirkland brilliant. But, yeah, you know, um, I, I don't know who's doing the clerk in there now, but hopefully it'll give it two or three years to dry out properly before the time the sprinklers on again. And then uh, we'll get the place straightened out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, brilliant, John. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, I could sit here all night and talk, but um, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think many people will, will, will listen past that. But um, thank you, John, for tonight's amusing outburst. If only someone would give you a job writing previews somewhere because I would absolutely love to read them every day. But you can find them on John Joe's blog spot, people. Okay, please go and have a look at that page. You will laugh lots, I promise. And check out Lee's systembet.co.uk. It's a very good site and Lee does very well for his members. Um, so any questions for when we next do a pod, please do let us know. Um, and they do seem to be coming quite a, a regular thing as as we go along. And I'll I'll turn these I'll turn these boys into jumpers yet. But uh, thanks for listening as always, and have a good weekend. Thank you.